Here's our next problem. Here's a right triangle. Uh, it has uh, sides of W sub X, W sub Y, and W, an angle of theta. If you're given W sub X and W sub Y, find W and theta. Our notation is to use asterisks to remind ourselves of the information that we were given. We're pretending that we were given numbers for these variables because we were told to do that, given wx and w sub y. I'm also going to put an asterisk in here for theta. Not because we were given theta, theta is an unknown, but this asterisk is to remind ourselves that we're focusing on this angle because this is what the question is asking us about, that angle. Now would be a good time to write down our Sokotoa mnemonic. Let's label the hypotenuse, which is opposite to the right angle, uh, and the adjacent side, which is adjacent to theta, marked with an asterisk, and the opposite side, w sub x, is opposite to theta. Now, let's first start by finding w. If you wanted to, you could start by finding theta. It doesn't matter what order you do these in, uh, but let's start by finding w. Well, this is one of those problems where we've been given two sides. We've been given two sides. Uh, well, we know that when you're given two sides, you don't need a trig function to find the third side. You can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's write the general formula, first of all. Hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. Then we plug in. It's always a good idea to write the general formula first and only then plug in. Our hypotenuse is W, one of the legs was w sub x, and the other leg was w sub y. Don't forget to square each term. Now, what was our goal? Which variable are we trying to solve for here? Well, remember, we're trying to solve for w. So we have to get the w by itself. That means we have to get rid of the square by doing the opposite. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. If we take the square root of the left-hand side, all that's left is w. But then we're obligated to take the square root of the right-hand side. So we've accomplished one of our goals. We found w. Remember that we know that on this type of problem, our answer is not acceptable if it uses theta. It has to be just in terms of w sub x and w sub y. But we did get an expression that just uses w sub x and w sub y. So we've accomplished our goal. Uh, we can say that that's what w is over here. Is there any way we can simplify this square root? We already talked about this on the previous problem. It would be very tempting to just write this. It's tempting to think that you can just take the square roots of each term separately and add them together. I hope you remember we can't do this. Don't do this. Even though it seems natural, this is not something that's legal to do with square roots. You can't just, uh, if you have the square root of a sum, you can't just take the square roots separately and then sum them together. Square roots just don't work that way. So there's no way to simplify this. We have to stop with this this would have been wrong. We're only 50% done because the problem was also asking us for theta. Let's form a plan for how we're going to find uh, theta. Well, we know that we're going to try to find theta using the information that we were given, which we've marked with the asterisks. So what did we mark with asterisks? What were we given? We were given the opposite side and the adjacent side, given the opposite and the adjacent. So which trig function should we use? We should use the trig function that involves the opposite and the adjacent sides, TOA, the tangent. Tangent of theta, TOA, opposite over adjacent. After writing the general formula, we can plug in. The opposite side was W sub X, and the adjacent side was W sub Y. Now we have to solve for theta. We're trying to find theta. We have to get rid of this tangent function then on the left-hand side by doing the opposite. The opposite of a tangent is an inverse tangent. If we take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, all that's left is theta. But then we have to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side. And 
And that's our answer. Remember that for this type of problem, the answer has to be in terms of just the givens, wx and w sub y. It would not be legal to find an expression for theta that uses w, because w is an unknown. But fortunately, there are no w's over here. Um, so this is a perfectly legal way to solve uh, the problem. So this is a good answer. So we can build that information into our sketch. That angle is the inverse tangent of w sub x divided by w sub y. And now we've answered the problem. These are our two answers. Now we've done two problems in a row where we were given not numbers, but variables. Uh, maybe you can compare this problem to the one that we did uh, before. Uh, one thing you might notice is that um, on the uh, previous problem, uh, on the previous problem, we end up, ended up um, putting the x component on the bottom of this fraction and the y component on the top. I'm just going to remind you of what we got in the previous problem. If you look back to your notes for the previous problem, that was about v's, not w's. And we got this expression for the previous problem, v sub y over v sub x. I just want to point out that notice that in this problem, um, in the last problem, the y subscript ended up on the top of the fraction. And in this problem, the y subscript ended up on the bottom of the fraction. So this is just a warning to be awake. You can't just memorize, oh, y always goes on top, or y go always goes on bottom. You always have to think through the logic of the problem, using Sokotoa and labeling the opposite and the adjacent sides. The reason that happened is that in this problem, the opposite side was the x variable. In this case, the opposite side was the x variable. But if you look at your notes from the previous problem, you'll see that in the previous problem, um, the adjacent side was the x variable. In this problem, the x variable was opposite. But if you look at your notes from the previous problem, in that problem, the x variable was adjacent. Well, that explains why in one problem, the x variable ended up on the bottom of the fraction, and in the other problem, it ended up on the top. So you can't just memorize x goes on top or x goes on bottom. You have to think through the actual logic of each problem. And it's always helpful if you have any confusion to label the opposite and adjacent sides and to put an asterisk in for the angle that you're focusing on so we don't forget about that and to use the Sokotoa mnemonic and to write the general formula first and then only plug in the specifics. Eventually you'll get to the point where these problems are so easy for you that you don't need to be so careful. But if you find that you're still making mistakes, then you should be careful and use this notation. There's no excuse for making mistakes on these problems. Uh, let me remind you, everything that we've done so far in these videos is supposed to be really easy. Um, so if these problems are not really easy for you yet, maybe you should keep using this notation until they become easy.